Welcome to TK's Garage 405. And this week I have a bunch more problems and I got stranded again. Welcome to TK's Garage 405, and this week I have a bunch more problems, and I got stranded again. What's going on guys? Give you a little bit of an update what's happening. It's uh, fixed the water pump in the truck here. Um, first trip out, I put a couple thousand miles on it already. Uh, at least, yeah, probably 1500 anyways. I was just cruising down the highway here and uh, out of nowhere and uh, it started overheating. I actually started getting the alarm and it was at 260 already by the time I noticed it. Um, there's no there's no antifreeze in the over or like in the tank. It's not the overflow, it's the main tank there, but so there's no antifreeze in there. I don't know if it boiled out because it got hot. So remember you guys saw the last video there. I uh, I filled it and I overfilled it actually so there would have been extra if it had a blip or something like that so not sure what's going on it's been totally fine um, I can't really see my temperature gauge the way that I sit in the truck and the way the steering wheel is it literally blocks all the gauges like normally I would catch that kind of stuff but by the time I noticed the alarm was going off already which is stupid I don't know why like if it was to get to like 220 230 or something like that the alarm should be going off but Anyways, so it was at like 260 or pretty close anyways by the time I, by the time the alarm went off there. So yeah, I hobbled it over to Bucky's here. Um, and then I'm having a mess of other problems. I'll just show you. So I haven't figured out this this problem yet. I'm letting it cool off before I open it up there. Um, I uh, show you another thing here, which is super obnoxious here. Um, so, if you can see in there, I have a generator that I carry with me all the time. The battery finally crapped out on it there. I haven't had time to change it. I actually forgot last time I was home, to be honest. Um, so I've been rope pulling it and the rope broke, but uh, I caught it before it went in. So I just tied it to the handle again there. I couldn't get it to fit through. So, so that happened last night. And uh, then as soon as I started it, and it did actually get going, then the, uh, it wouldn't run because there was a low oil alarm. It was getting late and it wasn't super cold last night. I was exhausted, so I just went to bed. Um, went to fill it today and the same run around I always have. I usually have like a little filler thing with me for this, but basically it's like a, the only way to fill this thing is either have one of those huge funnels, which I have no place to keep it without it getting dirty, or you get one of those things that you screw to the top of a bottle. Uh, also did not have that. You would think Bucky's with the massive freaking building that they have here. Uh, you guys can see, I'm at the world's largest Bucky's right now. If you guys need a job, I'll show you how good they pay here. It's pretty good actually. Cashier, 18 bucks an hour, restroom crew, 20. Look at this, you could be a car wash manager for 125 grand a year. So there you go, don't tell me you can't find a job lots of jobs here this place is huge but anyways they do not have they do not have anything to fill this so i have oil with me but that would not work so i always carry all a whole bunch of different oil probably going to get the gears on this one but do what you got to do i've done stuff like this on the generator before don't really care it won't run without the with the low oil pressure sensor so i went inside i uh i got a i caught a straw I took the straw I cut this down I put it on the top of here and I just squeezed them into it so it's full now that was the best I could do I said I don't I'd rather not put a uh, gear oil in it but whatever it's just a generator it's no big deal this thing's been pulled all over the freaking North America here so anyways I'm gonna try to figure out my 
truck issue now. Um, and I guess I will go from there. All right, guys. I just had a little case seal left about half the bottle from last time. I don't know if something's going on, like I got a head gasket leak there or something else, but uh, I still had one jug of antifreeze with me. I just about grabbed more last time I was there. I just was there yesterday and I almost grabbed some more and I didn't. It's way cheaper. Um, so another thing here is I've got a rented trailer right now. Um, this trailer, we've been doing home rentals and stuff, so I just uh, bought some equipment here. And man, these brakes, it sounds like these brakes are just dragging crazy on this trailer. So I don't know if, um, I don't know if something's going on with that and it's just overworking the truck, but the transmission, I don't know. I should probably check that, but unless the transmission was getting hot or something, I did not really notice. Um, sometimes I'll have it on the, sometimes I'll have it on the mile per gallon side. Sometimes I'll have it on the temperature side, but, uh, I'm gonna start it up with it open here again and just kind of see what happens, but don't know if I'm around a Walmart anywhere. I'd like to go get some more antifreeze, but then I'll have to let it cool off again. So it's probably probably some crazy price in the store here for antifreeze. So I'll fire it up once and see what happens here. All right, so I fired it back up here. I checked the antifreeze. Uh, hasn't gone down yet. I'm suspecting it's gonna burp a little bit, but I'm gonna find try to find another Walmart. Um, oil was good. As soon as you overheat something like on these new vehicles there, it tells you to change the oil right away. I had just changed it before I left. It was pretty clear and now it's dark-ish. Um, I did notice it's like, I uh, can't really see it here. Let me grab my light and show you. Here's another crazy good flashlight. I forget where this one came from. I think I think the first one my brother-in-law got us for Christmas. I think it was a Costco one. It's an Infinity X1 and then I bought a couple more of them from Amazon as well. These things are also amazing. I'll shut that off. Pretty wild. But uh, so down here you kind of see it's like sort of wet, but it's like, I don't know. I never really noticed that before. Uh, it doesn't feel like any breeze, but it looked like it almost looks down there. If you look close, it almost looks like it was kind of wet down there. So I'm hoping, I don't know. Cause that's kind of, it started leaking out of there the last time, right before it got into the, right before it got into the radiator and the transmission went right after that. So I'm really praying that it's not that I can't another transmission right now. I do not want to have to do that. That was another $4,000. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping it's not something stupid like a head gasket. Like I said, I put the I put the leak sealer in it just in case. I don't know if that would help anything at this point if it really was something like the head gasket, but kind of in kind of a another 700 miles from home situation here. So understand why it drove totally fine the whole way. I watched it like a hawk for a long time there. Never did any weird flips or anything. It ran exactly the same temperature it always has. So I guess I'll let it get warm again. I'm gonna do some searching and see if there's a Walmart in this vicinity around here. Maybe go grab some more antifreeze so I'll have some spare in case this happens again, but uh, maybe it gets more case ale for that matter. I'll have some with me. So I guess I'm gonna hit the road here and I'll touch base with you guys and see where we're at here after I drive it a little bit. I don't know. I topped it up the last time in the other video before we kinda got going at this. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Good old rental trailer. Heading to pick up some antifreeze here. I drove it, a, I drove it five minutes there, warmed up again to uh, what it normally runs at, and it wasn't acting up yet. So I'm gonna grab like four gallons of antifreeze just in case I actually do have some trouble. But uh, this has got me thinking about possibly just 
leaving this around as our beater truck and finally replacing it. Um, this has already happened quite a few times in the last while. It's just getting to be so many miles and there's just so many little things like I can't have a truck that's unreliable if I'm going to take bigger trips and, you know, be a thousand miles from home or more at times. Um, I run around a lot for things, so I don't want to end up having to, I don't want to end up having to deal with those kind of problems on a regular basis. It's not too bad because the weather's finally warming up now. You know, if it was minus 10, minus 20 out or whatever there, you know, 10 Fahrenheit, whatever, or colder, that's not a great temperature to be stranded at so kind of see here 794 for all these so this is just pre-diluted stuff a little more expensive than the last time i got it i think it was 730 or 720 or something like that but i will grab i will grab four more jugs and they're just mixed 50 50 already so you don't have to mix them make sure you don't put pure antifreeze in it unless you're going to mix it with water later or whatever you have to add roughly half and half or just a little little less 60 40 whatever um yeah let's see if i can find you guys what i was talking about earlier for the generator something like this would be another way to do it because you can squeeze the bag in there this is gear well again but that would be another sort of solution in a bind like i said that's just a generator i've had forever it's got it's got a lot of hours but uh this is kind of what I was originally looking for. Oh, no, still not. This might work, though. Something like a funnel like this with a little extension, but... Um, or maybe even one like this. Once you once you buy the funnel, then it's like... It gets dirty, right? And then, I mean, how do you keep it clean? You're going to leave it in your vehicle? Nice. So there's... I think this is kind of the same idea as what I was talking about. These are like 76 cents. I should just buy one right now, actually, to keep it in my truck. Or there's some flexible spouts there. Um, but I think I'm going to grab one like this. These are supposed to just basically... Oh, you know what? That might not actually work. I don't think it will work. Uh, no. Ah, uh, yeah, it'll work for a quart. So it goes like, like this on the top of the quart. Just screw it on the top or whatever, basically. Um, you usually get little flexy ones. Those are the ideal ones there for that kind of stuff, but I don't see any of those here, so just, uh, guess grab my antifreeze and hopefully that's all I need here. They have a whole bunch of pre-diluted stuff. You can see there's like Dex Cool here, um, all that kind of stuff, so still fairly cheap, way cheaper than the auto parts store. Um... But yeah, anyways, all right, well, we'll go check this thing out, warm it up, and see what happens here. Usually, like the last time, it didn't start it didn't start kind of burping itself until I got on the highway again. So really, really hoping there's not something more serious here, because this is starting to get frustrating. Um, said I don't want to get stranded far from home, especially pulling a trailer or something like that. I do have my backup truck. Don't really use it too much anymore, so I'd probably have to service it and things like that. It's been just kind of a garbage dump truck for now. It's got a couple hundred thousand miles, but it's nowhere near the quality of this truck. But the other option would be to engine swap it and just start from scratch again. Find a used, used uh, six liter there. <sighs> I don't know. It's been a really good truck. I don't know if it's the engine. Like I'm, I don't know. Well, it obviously isn't the engine because it runs totally fine. It just seems like maybe, unless, like I said, unless there's a head gasket or something going back there, but I will drive it a little bit and see how it goes here. I guess I'll cut off for now and we'll see how the rest of it, my night goes here. I'm going to probably try to drive another hour or so. All right, guys. I drove about 150 miles. It's the next day now. Um, it seemed like it was okay. Um, I was a hair short on antifreeze that was hot and I didn't top it back up. That's just a smidgen down. Didn't, didn't overheat or anything again. The gauge seemed normal. I did notice at an idle, my oil pressure is a little bit down now. Not tons, but a little bit. Um, but yeah, um, I'm not sure exactly what that was. If there was just a 
verbal in the system or what was kind of going on, but uh, I'm gonna give everything a quick check over here and I'll just show you guys that. All right, so I noticed that it wasn't throwing tons of heat, like you had to turn the heater up quite a bit. Um, you're gonna see here, if you look at this, if you look at the actual color of the antifreeze, that's uh, ungooder. Not sure exactly what's going on there. I checked it like, I think this morning and last night, and it was still perfectly, like it's like a clearish green, that pre-mixed antifreeze, and then all of a sudden, it's like it's like, exactly what's going on there and I have to figure it out. I'm just gonna pull the transmission dipstick here once. Just make sure it's not getting into the transmission. I haven't seen anything weird like that with the seems like it's okay. So I don't know. I don't know exactly. Like usually if something would be like a head gasket there'd be oil going in or antifreeze going into the oil, not the other way around. So it's too hot to open now. I'm probably just gonna keep trucking along. I've had a freaking just ridiculous amount of problems here. I ended up having to drop off the machine I had because I couldn't haul it any longer. This trailer that I got here. Um, I'm gonna check it right now. I just stopped. Yeah, it's not, oh yeah, let's see. It's like scorching here. You can see like I can I can put my hand on this one cold. This tire was just smoking last night. It's pouring rain right now, so that bearing is going bad in that thing. I thought it was the brakes, but obviously obviously a bearing is starting to crap out there, so I'm getting to the point where I might actually have to take that tire off there because I don't want it to end up falling off on the highway. Let's see these are ice cold so could grab a grease gun and try to grease it, but I don't know if that would help at this point. It's hard to say how bad it is, but yeah, it's, just, it's pretty hot. So, anyways, I lost my generator, fell upside down there. I was like, whatever, I just, I'm frustrated. Anyways, just getting ready to want to get home. I'm just over it all of this here. I'm kind of a frustrating week here, so. Just, uh, I guess I'm gonna go up with fuel here, go get a bite to eat, and try to make my way home tonight. Hopefully I can figure out something with this trailer. Like I said, no, nothing on the trailer, that's why I did that. I figured I could probably, I could probably haul it home and uh, grab her a Bucky's there. The gas is getting cheaper again, a tiny bit, um, but yeah. Probably try to make my way home there. Um, it's crazy how many pumps they have here. I was at like pump like 248 or something last night. The sealer's like over there, you can see 247. And there's still a bunch more, so there's got to be like probably 260 pumps here as well. So like 215. But, anyways, um, I'll check back in a bit. Thanks, guys. This should be a funny time to show you guys something. Whatever, whatever temperature GM sets they want to do. Like, I don't know why they wouldn't have it set to like 
say 2.30 or something so that you can catch it before you go on like nuclear overload. But anyways, um, another thing that that is like, like on the interstate, you can't, you can't just immediately pull over. There's places like, especially right now, there was pouring rain here like this, something happens, I can't just pull over in two seconds here. Someone will end up hitting me. So, you know, there's like guardrails and things like that over the place. So anyways, I think that's kind of stupid that they don't have the alarm set earlier. I mean, the vehicle gets over 2.30, there's something going on. At least you should be looking at it or maybe maybe like a silenceable alarm or something along the lines of that. But that's the second time that happened to me for that same reason. Like I always watch the gauges and the speedometer and all that stuff, but I, I more keep an eye on the actual gauge below. Like you can see the fuel mileage and stuff. I usually have it set on that or transmission temperature. That's the two that I pretty well watch 90% of the time. Um, and other than that, it's really, you know, I don't really watch the other gauges because I can't see them. Sometimes I actually go into a lapse where I kind of daydreaming and I'm like, oh man, I'm at like a quarter tank of fuel or something like that. I better start looking for fuel, you know, just because sometimes the time kind of goes by and you're just kind of zoned out or whatever. So just something to kind of think about there, but. I think the only way I can get around that is if I put my seat down and I just don't really feel comfortable like that. I might try it today just for the heck of it, but anyways, it seems to be running okay now. You can see it's back running where it's kind of normally been at. I don't see anything too crazy going on here, but I don't know, like I said, if it was just a blip or whatever. I showed you guys that the color of the antifreeze was like almost brown. I'm hoping it's not like a blown head gasket or something. I did put that seal in it last night so unless that just mixed in but I mean there was I don't know I don't know why it would have changed now it, like I said I checked it yesterday and this morning and it was still green so why all of a sudden is it dark now so not ideal overheating an engine never does it any favors usually that's when you start having things like hoses blowing down the road and things like that so anyways I'm hoping I can just hobble at home figure that situation out I don't know decide what I'm gonna do going forward here probably catch up on the video here later all right guys i made it home kind of hobbled her home here i don't know what is going on it's got a little less oil pressure than it has ever had before on the highway now it's probably just about borderline setting the low, low oil pressure alarm off um i think it's probably about maybe 18 psi or something like that which is still probably fine it's enough to not be a problem but uh yeah not sure here so today i'm actually going to drive it some more i made it home it was about oh probably 700 miles um so yeah i gotta run now to dallas which is another oh it's about four and a half hours from here um deal with my trailer situation here I'm going to return that trailer and then decide if I'm either going to buy another one or possibly just exchange it. Um, haven't fully decided yet. I don't really like this trailer, but I'm not sure. I, the biggest problem with trailer situation is I just have not been able to find something. Like, it took me a year to find my last one, and that was kind of how I got into this situation. I'm kind of regretting it now. I wish I would have, wish I would have just kind of kept that one. Went through it once there, fixed a few little things it needed and probably been good for another long time, but it had quite a few miles on it and yeah. So anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. I'm going to cut off for this one and uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, uh, share the channel around, help me grow. I was actually going to do a little video on my green truck this week here, but as you can see, it's raining and uh, I don't really have garage space for the most part to work on anything realistic. So that might be next week here. It's supposed to supposed to get nice again i was on the road most of this week as you can see too between getting stranded and hanging it up there it ended up being not a lot of time here when i got back on yesterday it was sunday already today's monday and uh, i was pretty sick yesterday actually i wasn't feeling the best just kind of a long week i think i was just just had a doozy of a week there so anyways guys uh like i said make sure you like subscribe share me around follow me um social media tk's garage 405 on instagram and uh I have a Facebook page as well, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.